Your dream vacation to Orlando, Florida is not complete until you visit Icon Park, at least according to them anyway. Icon Park opened on the 4th of May 2015 in the heart of Orlando, Florida to much excitement from the public. The park boasts over 40 different restaurants, a vast amount of bars, unique boutique shops and of course their jaw-dropping, can't-miss selection of rides. One of these rides was known as the Orlando Freefall and was billed as the world's tallest drop ride. Infamously, this ride rose to fame in early 2022 after a horrific incident sent shockwaves not only around Orlando but all over the world as 14-year-old Tyree Sampson was flung from the ride to his death. Not much is known about Tyree, but we do know he was born on August the 17th, 2007, in Missouri, America. Samson was nicknamed Big Tick by his friends and was a rising middle school football player. He got his nickname from the football team. Big Ticket meant his ticket out of St. Louis, which shows the potential that he had as a young football player. Samson wasn't only incredibly talented on the football pitch, he was extremely smart in the classroom as well. Other than this, he was described as a genuinely nice, well-mannered young man who you couldn't help but want to have a conversation with. At the age of 14, he was 6 foot 5 and weighed 383 pounds. This will become of importance later on in the video. According to his parents, Samson was on spring break visiting family friends in Florida when, on the 25th of March 2022, they decided to visit Icon Park for a day of thrills, excitement and fun. His mother said that a few days before, Samson was hurrying out the doors any teenage boy would do, eager and excited for his upcoming trip. He hugged his mother and said, I'll see you Saturday or either Sunday. And this was the last time she ever spoke to her son. On that day, the group enjoyed Icon Park, but his friends noted that Samson was prevented to go on some of the rides due to his physique and the size of him, which raised major safety concerns with the ride operators. At this point, the day was coming to an end, so at 11pm, the group decided that they would go on one more ride. They were saving the best till last. Icon Park's unmissable freefall ride. The freefall, otherwise known as the Icon Drop Tower, was marketed as the world's tallest freestanding drop tower at 430 feet tall. This is 15 feet taller than Six Flags Drop of Doom Tower. The Freefall Tower was built by a company known as Funtime, which was founded in 1998. The ride can have up to 30 people on it, and it drops approximately 400 feet at a speed of 75 miles an hour. In a picture taken just before the ride took off, Samson was in his seat with his shoulder harness unbuckled. The harness appeared to be too small for him, According to his friend, Samson knew that something was wrong. He expressed concerns about the harness, stating it was moving. At this point, the ride had taken off. The next moments were caught on video. Around 10 minutes in, Samson was dislodged from his seat. Passengers, friends and family watched in horror as Samson hung on. Heartbreaking, Samson's last words were, Tell my mum and dad I love them, before he fell out of his seat and plummeted to the ground. On the video, other passengers are heard screaming, demanding that they stop the ride. Samson was now on the ground surrounded by a pool of blood. He fell 200 feet. Terrified onlookers called emergency services. Alright, tell me exactly what happened. Um, it, the, the thing went down the drop, and like it, when they got closer to the bottom, when it hit the brakes, the guy fell right out of the sea, and bam, straight, straight through the the chair and just flopped. It was the biggest smack I ever heard in my life. Okay. All right, so we had no fun. We, like, I seen him hit the ground. Okay, so he fell out of the, the thing onto the floor? Yeah. Okay, are you with him now? No, there's, like, a bunch of, there's, like, a whole crowd around him right now. Okay. And was he the only one that was, that was, that fell? Yeah, he was the only one that fell, but there was, like, four people on the ride. Okay. All right, so we have help on the way. It looks like we're getting multiple calls. Yeah, yeah, like no one's calling right now. Everyone's just standing around looking at the fucking guy, you know? Okay. 
Yeah, we do. We have two other people that called in, and we're on the way there, okay? We're coming as fast as we can. The emergency services arrived on the scene, but unfortunately it was too late. Samson was now dead. Although it is likely that Samson died on impact, some believe that he was still moving after he hit the ground. An investigation was launched by the police immediately. The investigation found that the ride's weight limit was 286 pounds. Samson was way above this weight, so why was he allowed on it in the first place? The report also confirmed that the restraint was in place, but for guests above the weight limit, park workers should check that they fit within the contours of the seat and that the bracket fits properly. If this is not so, the person is not supposed to ride. It is not clear if Samson fitted the contours of the seat or if the bracket had fitted properly. Essentially, Samson was too big for the ride. How did no one notice? How this ride was given the okay by its creators and by Icon Park in the first place is questionable to say the least. The ride was built with an absence of critical safety features. For the majority of drop tower rides, over the shoulder harnesses are generally recognized practice but frequently include additional safety features like a seat belt that fastens the harness to the seat. The safety latch or the seat belt would prevent you from falling if the harness malfunctioned. The only thing keeping free fall riders from dislodging themselves from the seats are the plastic pull down straps that are designed to secure the rider in place between the legs. There were no additional safety features such as a seat belt. Funtime representatives claim that the ride was subjected to daily inspections and place the blame on park workers. Genuinely, the people that were doing these inspections were teenagers. They weren't qualified to check the safety of these rides. Samson's family went on to file a wrongful death lawsuit, accusing the park, ride operator, and manufacturer of negligence. The Samson family lawyer said the defendants in Tyree's case showed negligence in a multitude of ways. He said, one of the most glaring examples was failing to provide a $22 seatbelt on a ride that cost several million dollars to construct. He went on to state, is the manufacturer partly responsible? We believe so, absolutely. Does that absolve the operator's culpability? We think not. This was a cascade of gross negligence on multiple parties' parts. That's why we have multiple defendants. As of right in this video, the lawsuit remains ongoing, but if an update does come up, I'll make sure to let everyone know. This is a horrific story, and it was clear to see Samson was a good kid who will be missed by many. Tyree's dad said, I wish I was there to tell him I love him, that I'm sorry, for him to lose his life, so young, and I wish it was me. I want to know what happened to my son. I want to know why my son is in a white bag, having to get shipped home. He walked there, why can't he walk back? I want answers for everybody. The ride has since been closed down and will not reopen. And although I know Tyree's family can never move on, I hope they eventually find peace in the situation. If you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and maybe subscribe. Thanks for watching.